poison ivy. It's one of those plants people just love to hate, and for good reason. Around 90% of the human population is sensitive to the urushiol it produces. And just because you're not sensitive to it now, doesn't mean you won't become sensitive to it in the future. I know. I wasn't sensitive to poison ivy until I slipped while climbing up a tree and had to hug the trunk and ground poison ivy into my arms as I slid down it like a sandpaper covered fire pole. But is there more to poison ivy than it just being a plant to avoid? Yes, there is. A lot more actually. And some of the story may shock you. Real quick, for the purposes of this video, when I'm referring to poison ivy, I am including Eastern poison ivy, Toxicodendron radicans, Western poison ivy, Toxicodendron rydbergii, and Atlantic poison oak, Toxicodendron pubescens, since all three are found in the Eastern United States and are quite similar in how they cause us to itch and how critters use them. With that out of the way, let's talk about how poison ivy makes us itch. Simply put, it is our dumb luck as humans that we react to urushiol like we do. Despite what you've likely read, heard, or just assumed, urushiol is not produced by poison ivy as a defense. That's right, the stuff that causes us to itch and even blister isn't meant to keep animals from eating it. Instead, urushiol is more like a liquid band-aid produced by the plant to seal up wounds. That we have an overblown immune response to it is just an unfortunate biochemical coincidence. In fact, we are in very limited company when it comes to critters that react to urushiol. Only a few higher primates and the guinea pig react to urushiol like we do. It does nothing to the rest of the animal world, which is why your dog can run through it and even roll in it without any reaction. And yes, you can get a poison ivy rash from petting a dog that has been into a patch of it, which begs the question, how do you get that nasty oil off of their fur? A product we have used for years to clean urushiol off our skin after a day of doing habitat work or out hiking through the thick stuff is Tech New Poison Ivy Wash. Not only is it great for taking urushiol off of humans, it is also safe for dogs and cats. If you can't get to a place to scrub down right away, they do have some handy wipes that you can carry in your backpack that do the same thing. If you do happen to break out with poison ivy, um, the Tech New Wash is also very good for helping to limit the rash and making the symptoms of it way less in duration. So I highly recommend it for that too. I'll put a link in the description for both the wash and the wipes. So back to the lucky critters that are immune to poison ivy. What do they use it for? It may sound strange given our reaction to it, but many critters eat it. Poison ivy is a decent and abundant source of browse and is eaten with no ill effects by many herbivorous mammals, including white-tailed deer, rabbits, groundhogs, and even domestic species like goats. Insects also find it tasty and a wide assortment of them dine upon the foliage, including the showy emerald moth whose super weird caterpillars use it as one of their host plants. Warning, I absolutely, positively do not recommend trying to eat poison ivy. Consuming poison ivy or even breathing the smoke from burning poison ivy can have disastrous consequences for humans thanks to that unfortunate biochemical reaction between our immune system and urushiol. The small whitish green flowers are also utilized by pollinators and are an important nectar and pollen source for bees, flies, wasps, and butterflies, and the small white berries that follow them in the fall are eaten by songbirds, woodpeckers, northern bobwhite, and even wild turkeys, along with small mammals like chipmunks. The vines provide cover for small critters like lizards and tree frogs as they are scaling tree trunks. Vines growing on the ground or over down trees or brush piles are used as cover by birds and small mammals like rabbits. Poison ivy provides value to wildlife and pollinators in many ways. That being said, I remove it from areas where I or others may come into contact with it on a daily basis. Like around the house and yard. Out on the rest of the farm in the wilder areas, I just leave it be so the critters can use it. Poison ivy is often confused with several plants that are harmless to us as far as causing a rash goes. One of those that is most often confused with poison ivy is the box elder. To learn more about how to tell the two apart, check out this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.